Oops. All right. Thank you. Um, sorry for the delay there. This is starting off about as successful as my attempted trip here yesterday. <laughs> um, hopefully it doesn't derail the presentation like it did my trip. But um, so I just want to start by, you guys already read my notes, I think, up there since you saw the presenter view. But thank you so much to the organizers for uh, selecting our proposal, inviting us here. Um, first time in Japan. It's very exciting to be here. Um, and right away, I'd like to uh, acknowledge Sebastian um, Bergstahl and Mühlbacher, who's in the crowd, who works in my group and co-submitted this um, proposal with me, um, and is a big part of this project as well. Um, so I'm going to talk today about our, um, our proposal, which is a model organism database um, web application that uses Wikidata as its back end for, for the database that it draws from. And um, we've done a lot of, my group has done a lot of work in Wikidata in the realm of human genes and proteins, diseases, drugs, um, compounds, and I am uh, I'm a molecular microbiologist by training, so I'm going to talk to you about um, what I'm doing with modeling microbial genetic data in Wikidata um, as an example of, of, of what we're doing. I think it's really important to start um, beyond explaining the web application that I want to build. It's really important to start with explaining what Wikidata is um, and what it can be used for. Um, so. We're going to get to that in a second. A little background on the reason I'm using Wikidata to consolidate and link microbial genetic data is that there's a lot of microbial genetic data out there that we have not begun to scratch the surface of. Um, NCBI alone uh, hosts over 70,000 bacterial genome assemblies, um, opposed to 3,500 or so eukaryotic genome assemblies. Obvious uh, reasons for the difference in how many assemblies there are as bacterial genomes are really easy to sequence and assemble. So we're pumping them out. Um, every month thousands are published essentially. So um, we need, in, in order to understand um, and answer a lot of the question, or to, to find the answers to the questions that exist in uh, this data, we need a more structured and integrative approach um, using a linked database to, to be able to query and find out how these different entities are related to each other. Um, so the data associated with the microbial organism um, is spread out a lot, uh, amongst various resources in a distributed landscape. So you have large government funded databases that hold the uh, basic genome identifiers, gene identifiers, coordinates, all that kind of thing. Um, you have small domain specific databases that might have um, um, functional annotations, things like that. Uh, Explicit enzyme from the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics, for example, will hold um, information about the enzyme um, class that a protein is associated with. Uh, and then a lot of that data is actually out there in text form in a, a supplementary table of a primary publication. Um, and so in order to aggregate this kind of data together in one linked data model, we need a different kind of database. Um, and one that allows not just professional curators to gather the data there, but um, really harnesses the power of the crowd. Because with that many genomes out there, that much data we're generating every day, um, professional curators can't keep up and aren't going to be able to. So we need somewhere that people can go if they have an interest in a topic and put together the pieces of a puzzle to make a knowledge graph and um, enter Wikidata. So Wikidata is a um, centralized place that we can store and distribute the labor of, of um, structuring all this data. Um, so it's a project of the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, it's a semantic web compatible database that's openly editable. Um, it's not just for life sciences either. It's for all types of data. So just like Wikipedia, um, this is a place to store information about planets, about geography, about art, about people. So um, you can link any kind of data together in Wikidata in a structured model. Um, one of the first applications to use Wikidata and one of the reasons for its inception was um, was to harness or to, to excuse me hold the structured data that exists in a Wikipedia article. So for example um, the info box to the right of this page for the Zika virus 
holds basic data about the Zika virus. Um, it holds a taxonomic lineage, for example. And so Wikidata was created to get that data off of the, the main Wikidata, Wikipedia page out of the markup and put it into a structured environment that can be pushed to any Wikipedia language article um, in a very consistent and structured way. So here you have a Wikidata item um, that is the back end for this info box on the right. It holds the lineage data that's pushed to the Wikipedia page automatically, um, therefore or, um, centralizing, um, consolidating, and, and making the process more consistent. Um, so that's the first application to use Wikidata, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my proposal application, which is another application to use Wikidata um, at the end of this talk here, but um, it's really important to understand what you can do with Wikidata. So it's a, as I mentioned, it's semantic web compatible database, so it's essentially um, a collection of objects about a, a piece of information um, that has a series of claims on it. So the item uh, will have a stable queue identifier and it will be linked to, um, it, it will either have properties attached to it um, with, uh, the claims will be a property like a, uh, um, the data types could be a string, um, an external identifier, uh, a timestamp and a reference, something like that. Um, but the real power of Wikidata comes in being able to link items to each other through properties. Um, so an item will be linked to another item through a property, therefore creating the graph. Um, so back to microbes, this is the microbial uh, genomic and genetic data model that we've created and put in Wikidata. Um, if you can, if, uh, the, so basically what it is, is you have a um, taxonomic hierarchy um, consisting of species, um, kingdom, phylum, all the way up to bacteria, essentially. Um, and then strain is where the genes and proteins are linked to because um, specific strains, genomes are uh, sequenced. Um, so if you go into the data model in Wikidata, you can see this is a um, Wikipedia or a Wikidata item for the strain. Um, and you can see the, uh, the first statement on it is taxon name. So its name is Chlamydia trachomatis 434BU. I use Chlamydia as my example because I worked in a Chlamydia genomics lab as a graduate student. Um, this is an example of a claim here. So the uh, data type is a string, Chlamydia trachomatis 434BU. And then you can see the reference below it. And the references can be as rich and multiple as you want them to be. This, is, uh, this, this piece of information is taken from the NCBI taxonomy database. Um, you have a direct link into the entry in NCBI taxonomy by clicking on the external identifier associated with it. And you have a timestamp for when it was stated. And you can, again, add as many references for a claim as you want. Um, if this is also stated in Uniprot taxonomy, you can add that reference there. Um, and it also being able to get directly into the entry of the database gives provenance and credit to where that information came from. So to navigate through the Wikidata graph, on the, la on the left you see the diagram. We're at the strain level species right now. If you go um, in this direction, through the found in taxon property, uh, or excuse me, through the parent taxon property right below that, you get to the species level item, Chlamydia trachomatis. If you keep going in that direction through the parent taxon predicate, you get all the way to bacteria. If you go in the other direction, um, now you have the genes and the proteins linked to the, um, to the strain that's genome was assembled. Um, and these have basic identifiers on them, like RefSeq protein ID, um, found in taxon is how they're linked to the strain. Um, this one is part of an enzyme, the tryptophan synthase, um, and also go terms are linked to the protein, so you can query by function. Um, and, and so I'm going to get to that in just a second. This is essentially um, a structured, stable database of, it, so far, of bacterial genomes. Um, we've done the 120 NCBI reference genomes, which are the most relevant um, bacterial genomes for um, for human health and laboratory research. And so we started with those as a way to represent um, the important bacteria out there. We put all of their genes and proteins into Wikidata in this structured data model. And um, essentially what it creates is a stable framework um, that people can add to, especially because Wikidata is an open database where anyone can edit. You don't have to make a request to the, to the database administrators to add an item. Um, so to get to why I'm here is that our proposal is to make a um, web application that will allow you to load one of these organisms. Um, and we worked with the Apollo development team in a hackathon we hosted in January um, to, uh, to 
use JBrowse, which is an open source generic genome browser, um, to use the Wikidata Sparkle endpoint. And this is something I didn't mention. Wikidata has a very powerful Sparkle endpoint. So you can do queries that will allow you to navigate through that graph, find different, ask different questions. Um, and this application is, is not uh, is going to use the Sparkle endpoint to load an organism, all the genetic um, entities and properties associated with that. Um, you'll be able to browse the genome with JBrowse, um, directly go into Wikidata and edit the item. If you know something about that gene or that protein, um, you can go in and directly edit that item and add, an, add a piece of information about it, add a go term or, or link a go term or add a reference, add a paper um, that's relevant to that item. Um, so this kind of thing essentially already exists. This is, this is just for viewing data um, that, that doesn't have a lot to do with relationships, but relationships are really the point of making a linked database. So the next step is um, to add these different kinds of relationships to Wikidata between the items. So what we have done um, in our group is we've, we've added quite a few relationships, um, organisms, are already in there as part of our data model. Um, their genes, proteins, those kinds of things. We've also added, um, in, for microbes, for example, the diseases they cause. Um, and we've added the drugs that treat those diseases linked to these different items so that you can query for um, different diseases treated by the same drug. Um, we've added, there's, there's compounds in Wikidata, anatomy, these kinds of things. And all these relationships meet, need to be made. And especially in microbial research, um, in microbiome research specifically, um, it's really important to figure out the different ways these organisms are interacting with each other. And this is a great resource to do that because they, um, these organisms express enzymes that have substrates and products in the small molecules that are in the environment. So you can link um, the enzymes, which are the colorful blobs here, to the small molecules that exist in Wikidata that um, um, that they use as a substrate and convert into a product. And then you can find um, other bacteria or a host molecule. Um, uh, the, the product of a host enzymatic reaction is the substrate of another bug's enzymatic reaction. So you can really find how these guys are interacting with each other if you link it all together in this manner. Um, now, a lot of this data uh, doesn't exist in a very structured way right now where you have these proper identifiers mapping that enzyme to that substrate. Um, and, so, and if it does exist, it's often um, in a licensing arrangement that doesn't allow us to put it in Wikidata. So what we need beyond the application that I'm proposing, which is just a simple way to view the genes and proteins that exist in Wikidata, we need applications that allow people to interact with Wikidata and add these kinds of relationships. So if they're reading a paper and they see that um, there's an enzymatic reaction in there, and they're trying to, to follow this pathway in their, when they're um, designing their experiments. They can go into Wikidata, see if that entry is there, and if it's not, they can add it. Um, and the only way you're ever going to get people to do that is if you make it incredibly easy. So another type of application would be to edit Wikidata, to get the crowd to edit Wikidata. Um, so, for example, enzyme substrate product types of relationships exist in um, Expacy Enzyme. They host the enzyme commission number, which is mapped to a protein that has that enzymatic function. Um, in order to be able to map that substrate or that molecule um, product, whichever it is, to the enzyme that's interacting with it, you need stable identifiers, you need to figure out exactly what it is so you don't make mistakes and cause redundancy in your database. Um, so what we're proposing is this type of application where you, um, you text mine um, and, and you, you annotate the reaction um, that's hosted on Expacy Enzyme. These, these aren't um, linked to identifiers in Expacy Enzyme, but what you can do is you can try to find, you can text mine and annotate the reaction and try to find that entity in Wikidata and then show people um, the text and the suggested um, Wikidata item below that and say, um, is this the same thing? Does this make sense? Um, and if it is, click yes, and then you can link um, that enzyme to its product. Um, and if it's not, click no, um, et cetera. Essentially what I'm saying though, this is um, an example. And what Wikidata is really built to be is the back end 
to applications. Uh, the interface itself is kind of clunky, not that easy to use, not that easy to get through. The Sparkle endpoint is great, but as we just heard in the last talk, Sparkle endpoints are not easy for um, non-developers to use. And the, the things that the speaker prior to me was talking about is um, exactly what I'm, what would be great is to have some sort of um, um, user interface for making queries in Wikidata to, um, to take advantage of these relationships that we're trying to get in there. Um, so overview of what I'm getting across is that we're developing this data model in Wikidata with all these relationships. There's a lot of potential there because um, we can get experts to add their data um, but what we really need is applications, these types of applications for viewing the data, for editing the data, these kinds of things. And um, what better place um, to, to recruit people to, to if, if not develop themselves, give us ideas for how to create applications that would be really useful in Wikidata, um, in taking advantage of Wikidata and what it is. Um, storing all this data there, having it in a place where we can use a really powerful Sparkle endpoint to answer biological questions. Uh, and with that, I'd just like to acknowledge um, the people from my institute, the Scripps Research Institute, Andrew Sue, our boss, Benjamin Good, the Wikidata Project lead, um, Sebastian, who's here and I've already um, introduced, and then the rest of our um, contributors. Um, with that, I thank you for your attention. I'd be happy to answer any questions.